Howdy, Tinker Nerds. No, I haven't seen you in a while. Stop ghosting me like that, it's not cool. I am super excited because the Raspberry Pi Foundation just released their own custom chip. And I have one right here to test out. Oh, it tastes like raspberries. Oh. something new? Well, to keep those knowledge gears greased, remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to get notified when a poppin' fresh video is ready for your consumption. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation just released a new thing. What's the big deal? Whoa now. Did you forget whose channel you're on? Just to make sure, let me check your temperature. <laughs> You're okay. So this is the new Raspberry Pi Pico, and it's not just a new board, it's an entire new product line. Up until now, the Raspberry Pi name has been synonymous with many computers like the Raspberry Pi 4 and the Raspberry Pi Zero. But the Pi Pico isn't a standard computer like that at all. So what is it that makes a Pi Pico different? Well, it's a microcontroller. Actually, to be more specific, this is the microcontroller. The RP2040, a custom-made Raspberry Pi microcontroller chip. And all the extra stuff around it is to make the chip easier to program and use. To fill you in, a microcontroller is a chip that can be used to interface with other electronic devices like motors, lights, or other sensors, and then it can execute a specific set of tasks to control those electronic devices. Now see here, Tinkernut, couldn't you do that with the other Raspberry Pi input-output pins? For the most part, yes, but in order to use those pins, you would have to wait for the Pi to boot, load an interface, load the script, and then finally you'd be able to use it, but that takes up several minutes and lots of unnecessary power for other things that you'll never need. But with the microcontroller, you can load a program onto it, and when it boots up, it immediately starts executing that code. No unnecessary programs or operating systems to go through. And it can run on a pair of AA batteries. Hmm, this sounds a lot like a product that's already been on the market for a while. <laughs> Arduino. <laughs> Yes, an Arduino is a good comparison to what the Pi Pico is, and if you're a microcontroller enthusiast, there's also the Espressif line of microcontrollers. So if you recall that video I did about how a Raspberry Pi is not like an Arduino and should not be confused with an Arduino, well this now really blurs that line. So with all these other microcontrollers that are already out there, what makes the Pi Pico so special? Well, there's its programmable input-output pins and its ease of use with MicroPython. But overall, its selling point is its selling price. Clocking it in only $4, it's one of the cheapest ways to get into the world of microcontrollers. So I could cover all the specs and what all the input-output pins do, but this being a beginner's guide, we're gonna skip all that and save it for a later time and just jump right into how to use it. A great feature about the Raspberry Pi Pico is how easy it is to get started with it, especially using MicroPython. All you have to do is hold down the boot select button and then plug it into your computer while holding down that button. And even though I'm gonna be using a Raspberry Pi computer to program my Pico, these instructions also work for Windows, Mac, and other Linux devices. So once you got it plugged in, you can release the boot select button and the computer should recognize it and open it up as a storage device. In it, you'll see a shortcut to the official Pi Pico guide on the Raspberry Pi website. It details how to get started with programming in C or MicroPython, which is a version of Python for microcontrollers. And if you're just getting started with microcontrollers, I highly recommend going with MicroPython because it's much easier to learn. So to do that, we have to download the MicroPython bootloader. It's a UFC file that you can just drag and drop onto your Pico folder once it's done downloading. And then when the Pico detects it, it's gonna reboot and then we can start programming this sucker. The easiest software for programming the Pi Pico is Thonny, a simple to use Python editor. So just make sure you've downloaded the newest version of it and when you start it up, in the bottom right hand corner of the window, you can select the Pi Pico as your device. Let's start by printing some simple text in the Python editor and then click the run button. It'll ask you where you want to save your file and you want to save it to your Pico. The Pico has two megabytes of storage to save your programs to, so you can name it whatever you want, but make sure it ends in the .py extension, otherwise the Pico is not going to know how to read it. 
Once it's saved, you'll see the output in the shell portion of the window. If you were to hit the run button again, you'll see the output again. Now you can start expanding your Python code and write more complex examples, and then save them and run them on your Pico. So the cool thing about this is the files are stored on the Pico itself. So if you were to take this off your computer and load it up on somebody else's computer, all your files would still be there. But the appeal of a microcontroller isn't just to store code on it, it's being able to control other electronic devices with it. So let's do that with the most basic example we can, the Blink example. Let's create a new file and to get started let's import a couple of libraries, the machine library and the uTime library. Libraries are basically external files of code that if we want to use them in our program we have to import them. So with the machine library we can create a new variable that tells us which pin the device we want to control is located. In this case it's pin 25, the onboard LED, and we can set the pin mode to out meaning that we're only outputting a signal to it instead of receiving input. Next we can create a while loop to run anything that we have inside the loop indefinitely. And inside of the loop we're going to set our LED variable to 1 which will send a power signal to it turning it on. Then with our uTime library we can use the sleep function to pause the program for 3 seconds and after that we can set our LED variable to zero, turning it off, and then pause again for another three seconds. And then since this is in our loop, it will continue indefinitely. Now let's click run and save to our Pico as blink.py. And when the Pico reboots, you should see the onboard LED start blinking. Wow, you just controlled your first real life device and it was so anticlimactic. But don't worry, in the next few videos I'll be showing you some much cooler things that you can do with the Raspberry Pi Pico. If you want more tinkering videos you can click here or please be kind enough to like, subscribe, or comment. So until next time, keep tinkering, tinker nerds.